Am I free to go? After your atonement. She comes before you with a solemn heart, shorn of secrets, naked before the eyes of gods and men, to make her walk of atonement. Shame. Shame. You know that famous scene from Game of Thrones with Cersei being paraded around the streets and then the, the people behind her going, shame, shame, shame. You know, what's so interesting is that actually reveals such an interesting part about human nature that George R. R. Martin was able to capture really well. Full disclosure, I haven't read the books, I've only watched the show, but the show captured it well, I should say. There's actually an aphorism or a collection of aphorisms by Nietzsche that kind of describe what was happening there. So stick around for that. I'll just explain those aphorisms real quick. It's literally just a few sentences. So this is from uh, The Gay Science, and this is aphorism 273. Whom do you call bad? Those who always want to put to shame. And then right after that, aphorism 274. What do you consider most humane? To spare someone shame. Okay, so what is shame? And why is Nietzsche so against it, right? Now, people who don't understand Nietzsche that well, they'll just say like, oh, well, it's the will to power and Cersei Lannister was a powerful person, therefore shaming her is bad, <laughs> right? Um, no, <laughs> that's not the reason. The reason is, is that shame is, it's a very interesting emotion. Think about what shame is. Well, typically when you're shaming somebody, you're appealing to a crowd of people. You're appealing to the wider masses and audience, right? And so fundamentally, it's slave morality. And not just slave morality, it's actually a tool of the priest figure, which Nietzsche talks about in the genealogy of morals, which is kind of this very shrewd, smart person who manipulates the herd in order to get what he wants, okay? And I'm gonna share a little bit of a story with you. <laughs> of something that happened in my own life of like where I was sort of almost that priest figure for a little bit. So my old YouTube channel, which I really don't post on much anymore, it was all about bashing the Manosphere, um, even though I consider myself a part of the Manosphere for a while. And there is this one very popular podcast, you've probably heard of it, it's called Fresh and Fit. And um, I was one of the people leading the charge against like just exposing them for, for lack of a better term, the beta males that they were, right? They weren't actually practicing what they're preaching, whatnot. And really the reason that my channel blew up, that one, is because I was employing that tactic of shame where I would appeal to most people where they would say, oh, well, if you say things like, you know, women cheat, men have sex, uh, uh, men are allowed to cheat, but women aren't. Women should be subservient to their husbands. Uh, women shouldn't be able to vote, right? If I talk about those things, and say, wow, you guys are POSs for talking about that. I appeal to a larger audience. I shame those people and I shame their followers. And then people, normal people, the common people I should say, get riled up and then they follow me as a result, right? And so you can actually see the repercussions of this with uh, YouTube, with a lot of social media, a lot of very popular content creators, all they really do is just react to the dumb idiots of our world, <laughs> you know? And then they'll shame them. They'll be like, for shame, for shame and then everybody's just clapping like seals around them, similar to how everybody was clapping like seals when they were parading Cersei Lannister uh, on the streets. And it's important that it's Cersei Lannister too because Cersei isn't a nice person in the show. If you watch it, she's basically evil, right? She's not the best person. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that shaming people is inherently, or shaming a bad person is a bad thing. However, the grander repercussions of that is that um, you're appealing to the masses, right? And sometimes, a lot of times, the masses get stuff wrong, where especially if you are living in a decadent society and there's certain people who are trying to make that society better, they have to do things that are different um, in order to uh, incite sort of some sort of change, right? Um, so shame is sort of a tool of the herd, but not specifically just the herd. It's a tool of people leading the herd who are kind of manipulating the herd to manipulate the herd against their enemies, right? If you remember, again, the show Game of Thrones, it was the, I forgot his name, like the high priest of the seven or whatever, who was pushing for Cersei to be shamed, right? He was the mastermind behind all of it. He kind of took on this, um, and he was actually a priest too, that's why this is perfect. 
he was actually uh, more resentful, I should say, than almost everybody. And he was out for power just as much as everybody. Okay, so now is the part where I go to a little bit of a darker place here. Um, you know, back in the early 1900s and the late 1800s, it would be very normal for people to gather around to see the lynchings in the U.S., the lynchings of a black man. Typically, the black man will be shamed uh, or um, sometimes he actually did it, but a lot of times he was just framed for it. They would say like, oh, he raped some woman or he stole something or whatever. And everybody, the entire town, would gather around to see him get hung, right? It was sort of like this punishment, and punishment is very important in Nietzsche too. We're not going to talk about that too much in this video, but it was a punishment for somebody not following the herd or somebody outside of the herd of the common people doing something and then being put on display, being shamed, and everybody around them feeling powerful and virtuous as a result. And so, like I said before, you look at the modern day and you, you were kind of in this, uh, dare I say, sort of like a shame-based culture. It's becoming more shame-based, which again, isn't inherently bad. I come from a shame-based culture, which is Japan. It helps people, forces people to be in line. Um, but I think in Western society, especially people becoming uh, championing, shaming more and more. It's, it's signs of a decadent society. It's signs of people uh, not wanting to progress and become better and try new and better things. Because in a world where everybody has punishes people for being different, that is a world that doesn't progress. And I kind of look at humanity as, um, you know, like some of those flat escalators that you see at airports uh, the, to take you to one, uh, to your destination or whatever. So imagine that you're walking against that. Well, if you're walking against it and you're walking, you know, harder than normal or faster than normal, you'll be able to progress against that current, right? But if you're just standing still, you're just gonna go backwards. And I think it's very similar with humanity or the struggle, the story of humanity is pretty similar where um, if you are not going forwards, you're going backwards. Because typically unless, and this is from a Nietzschean worldview, it's what Nietzsche believed, if you don't have great men who are allowed to move humanity forward, then the crowd, the herd takes over. The herd is mostly um, governed or motivated by the self-preservative instinct. And so they'll, they'll just regress, they'll go backwards. This is actually what you see happen to great empires that declined over time. This happened to the Roman Empire, this became very decadent. Arguably, this is happening to the American Empire right now, the US, it's going backwards. And so it's something to be, you know, you see all the shaming and stuff going online. I'm not sure if it's causing the decline of the West. Maybe it's a contributing factor, uh, or it's just a symptom of that. The fact that we all think that just shaming all these people all the time. And again, I was guilty of this myself, even for people who deserve it, which I still to this day believe Fresh and Fit deserved it. <laughs> um, like, and same thing, like Cersei Lannister probably deserved it too. But it's sort of that mentality, you know? And if that mentality becomes too prevalent, then in social media and in just politics or whatever you want to call it, any sphere of influence, it's almost like you have no choice but to have to play that game, that shaming game. If you aren't creating an us versus them dynamic, which is very powerful in marketing. So one of the first things you learn uh, in marketing is creating an us versus them dynamic to get people on your side. If you read 40 Laws of Power, he talks about that too. But part of that is shaming them. You, you have these ideals that you list out and say, this person isn't following that. And typically people will follow you as you are leading the revolt against that person that is worthy of scorn. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep this a bit of a short video. Um, it's just an aphorism that I came across of Nietzsche's as part of my daily uh, Nietzsche series. And I actually, I have more of a condensed version of this, sort of a Cliff Notes version on Instagram. Uh, called at Nietzsche advice so go ahead and follow that um, if you haven't already I'm sure most of you guys haven't but I want to know your opinion on shame because I think shame as Nietzsche pointly corrects out when shame becomes popularized that is a sign of decadence that is a sign of a declining society and the more and, and this is why I, I refuse or I try my best to not 
get into shame-based content because that is the content that made my previous channel very popular and I was financially incentivized for it. More importantly than that, I had, I had a perceived sense of high status for it, gaining like 20 something thousand subscribers. I felt very powerful, but I was the priest figure. I was that high septum priest in Game of Thrones that was shaming Cersei Lannister. Is that a good person? Is that an admirable person to be like? I mean, that's for you to decide. I, I decide for myself that it's not. But it's gonna become more and more tempting if you're a content creator yourself or just a viewer to, to really watch your viewing habits and view how, see how often you end up following people who, whose main, uh, main selling point of their channel, whatever they say, is just shaming other people. Even if they're justified in it, it's not good for them psychologically, it's not good for you psychologically. It's inherently slave morality, it's inherently a herd mentality. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Goodbye.